Well, as, as I said at the start of the discussion, I think we have a tradition of gathering data in the market. So the, the amount of data which is available is, has increased enormously in the last couple of years. But I think the big trend is that um, our capacity to make information of that data and create it into products the sector can use to be more productive, that's the big, that's the big trend. That's, that's really going to change the industry and it's changing the industry right now. For instance, I, I, will, I will give you an example. If you look at, um, at uh, resi the residential market in the Netherlands, um, you, can, um, you can have, it's, it's now, you have to have a uh, automated valuation with every finance deal in an, w if you buy residential in the Netherlands. So it's, it, the banks have to provide a automatic valuation. And that's only possible because all these data are available. And that's, you know, that's five years ago that was unimaginable. So that's, that's so an that's example. A real, that's a real change from there being yeah. so much data available. Right. Okay, yeah. good. Um, Matt, what are you seeing? In um, personally, I think the, uh, the thing that we're going to see most is actually investment into the prop tech sector and, and property technology. I mean, we, there are some great companies and, you know, there's some people doing some great things, but real estate is a long, long way behind a lot of other industries uh, when it comes to technology. I mean, I know patents isn't everything, but uh, real estate, if you, I think it was uh, Reuters did a, uh, did a report on, on patents. And you know, real estate is one of the bottom industries to apply for, for patents uh, to protect their technology within industry. So I think you'll see I think you'll see a lot more investment. You'll see a lot more sort of venture capital companies very interested in, in the market, especially talking about America earlier. I think you know there's some exciting things happening uh, happening in Europe at the moment. Um, and you'll also I think you'll also see big companies, you know, the likes of Savills, JLLs of the world, taking taking this a lot more seriously, technology a lot more seriously. Um, I, I was speaking, I won't name him, but I was speaking to someone the other day and, you know, he was saying about that uh, they were an agency and they'd sold a lot of their data to CoStar. You know, and now CoStar are worth three times more than, than this company is worth and now they're selling that data back back to them, uh, which, is, which is an incredible state of affairs, really. So I think the biggest trend is, is more money into the industry and, and more companies taking, taking technology in, in real estate uh, much more seriously. Maybe, maybe one, one thing I would like to add is that I think, I think it's great that we are sitting here as I think we represent a whole new uh, kind of, let's say, a layer in the industry, let's be independent information providers. I think that's five years ago, 10 years ago, they didn't exist. So, and that's, that's a whole new uh, kind of service which is changing the industry, yeah. Good, Simon, what's your take on it? Um, I was gonna say something else, but I'm actually gonna pick up on, on something that uh, Matt said, which is a slightly different take, is that you know, I, I foresee over the next five to 10 years, a huge amount of consolidation in the data sector. Um, I think you're going to see a huge number, you know, a of you know maybe some of the early you know the early innovators that we're seeing at the moment in the U.S. and to some degree in Europe not making it as they in their current state, and others coming in and buying that sort of well-established, well-built technology, and actually then being able to monetize it, and actually in a much bigger corporate sort of a, not corporate that's the wrong word, but a much bigger environment where they can pull together transactional data, rental data, um, you know, lease and leasing data, sort of floor, you know. You know, people moving around, building data, all that sort of stuff. So then bring it all together in one move. Because I think, you know, more often than not, the most common thing we hear from clients is, you know, can we link your data to this data set or our economics data set, our forecasting data, our rental data, or, you know, our internal data. Uh, and it's become a big thing about, you know, having data from one supplier. And I think that's going to become, you know, when you look at the, you know, the, the, the Googles and the Amazons, um, you know, that's probably where we're going to go with, with that data supply. Okay, interesting. Cyrus. I um, well, I'll say what I think. The, the I do a big consumer trend, and I think, and I'll, I'll say what I think the supporting innovation that's required to make it work is after the. I think the big consumer trend is, is towards curated retail or a personalised experience, and it does. It seems that everyone seems to agree, the days of, 
I'm going to buy a load of mass-produced product, and then I'm going to go and have fast food, and then I'm going to go out. That's kind of expired. And, that's kind of, and now it's, I want a personalized experience. Having an experience is more important than having staff. Everything is going to be in some way tailored to me and what I want to do inside a shopping center, specifically in that example, or in a retailer in general. And to make that work, um, two things got to happen. One is, the only people that are going to do that are shopping center companies. And like you said, you know, the level of innovation has been quite so. Actually, I've read the patents thing as well. And there's more patents in agriculture than real estate. Well, it's interesting as an industry perspective. Um, but you know, only shopping centers are going to be able to understand and influence the behavior of shoppers around a bunch of retailers like that. If you think of something like omnichannel, you know, the, the, the nirvana of omnichannel is that I can bring together experiences outside of a brand based around me as a person. And to do that, you have to have someone curating it that's not a retail brand. The reason that we at Movo have invested so heavily in machine learning, or if you like artificial intelligence techniques applied to data, is the need to tailor experiences to individuals, right? And whether it's individual around a brand, and this is the kind of data I need to give specifically back to Hollister compared to you know, McDonald's, whatever, right? Or whether it's an individual and how I'm trying to help influence their behavior or support decision making that they're doing in some sophisticated, savvy way, uh, no gang of monkeys in a warehouse is going to do that, right? The only thing that's going to do that is a computer understanding the problem and tailoring and working with data in real time and delivering something to someone that, that, that they need. And those are big changes. Like all industry, like all technology innovations, everyone learns the name immediately. So you see Internet of Things and machine learning everywhere. But to actually make that work and stick in a production environment, that's challenging. And it's going to land in the plate of everyone that's sitting up here and every other punter that's running around the center. Um, but it's definitely where it is today. It's an opportunity today. Okay, good. Richard? Yeah, I agree with, uh, with most of what is being said. Maybe then, uh, as being the last one, a little bit more you know, longer term, maybe a little bit more philosophical. But the big trend is that roles are changing and roles are disappearing. That's what's happening. That's what's happening based on all this technology. And it is, I would say it is good to almost like you know, look at the world or look at the industry through the through the eyes of a, I don't know, a 12-year-old or an 8-year-old. And it is, um, it was once described to me by, actually he was about 18, but it was, you know, you are at home, you get up and you go to a place where you don't want to be and you get all kinds of raw materials from all over the world and you're going to put something together based on a, uh, a model or based on a design that is not yours. And you are making that for well, people that are not there, but all over the world. And he, sp he said, that's not logical. And I think that, you know, there are more and more people in real estate that are not only using technology to do the things that they do smarter or more efficient or whatever, but they really start to do other things because like any industry, the real estate industry yeah, is, is not logical. I'd like to thank you, but also to thank our panel for a very interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you.